Hello, this is Daniel Cuellar from PeaceRoundAcusm.com. Just continuing our conversation on currency versus money and wealth and economics and the monetary system and precious metals. So I want to talk a little bit more about um, the history. Um, we had a hyperinflation in this country um, during the Revolutionary War, right? The, um, the, <laughs> the loosely defined government at the time was um, printing um, continentals, continental notes to pay the uh, the Patriot soldiers at the time, and uh, it was it was a massive massive hyperinflation that occurred, um, and the uh, characteristic sign of hyperinflation you know that you see when you type it in Google is uh, people trucking wheelbarrows full of currency uh, to buy loaves of bread or <laughs> a dozen eggs. So so this did happen during the Revolutionary War. And this is what originated the the uh, phrase "not worth a continental," right? And uh, in the Constitution, um, this is why they they there's a there's a place in the Constitution where they um, they wrote only gold and silver coin will be made legal tender, um, and they they assign the specific amounts of grains of gold, specific amount of grains of silver, to equal one dollar at the time, right? Um, and so they were very um, very vigilant about about the idea of fiat currency and inflation right I think it was Thomas Jefferson who said um, fiat currency is not money it is the ghost of money right <laughs> it's it's like a uh, fiat currency is like you know when you give your your coat to the coat check um, the coat is the money the the claim receipt for your coat is the currency Right. It is a claim check. That's what currency is—a claim check to money. That's what it used to be, anyway. Um, before 1913, um, you know, it used to be a claim check to money, and that claim check used to be before the Federal Reserve in 1913 used to be um, twenty dollars. Used to be equivalent to one ounce of gold, um, and, um, and and so you know every every. Um, Every piece of currency was redeemable in gold, which was the money, right? The currency was not the money. It was the claim check to the money. So, and then as the Federal Reserve came into power and started printing money, World War I, um, massive amounts of currency to pay for the, uh, the war, you know, it was devalued um, down to one, one, uh, one ounce of gold equals $50. And then uh, under FDR, it was devalued again. One ounce of gold equals about $86. And then... And then in uh, 1971, Nixon completely, um, yeah, took off the, the gold standard completely. Um, so massive, massive um, fluctuations occurred as a result of that. Um, massive inflation, I, I believe, in the uh, in the 70s. Uh, right after that, gold shot up <laughs> in terms of price, doing all doing accounting for all the currency that's been created by the Federal Reserve, which, by the way, um, has a nice name called Mandrake Mechanism or Currency Creation or currently it's called Quantitative Easing but colloqu colloquially we understand that to be counterfeiting, right? Printing currency is simply counterfeiting, right? <laughs> if you take anything that the state does and you reduce it to an individual level and if it is a crime for the individual, it is a, a crime for the state to do it, right? So if we have a printer in our basement and we print currency, it's called counterfeiting and you go to jail for that, but if the state does it it's called currency creation, the Mandrake mechanism, or quantitative easing, and it's cheered by the Keynesians. <laughs> and uh, and it's kind of amusing that when you watch the news about the actions of the Federal Reserve, the uh, chairwoman uh, Janet Yellen would say that we're we're trying to go to our our target inflation rate of two percent, which translation we're trying to rob you uh, two percent per year. <laughs> so. Uh, again, inflation being the hidden tax, right? Robbing you of the value of your currency, right? So, um, so it's very important to understand that. And uh, you know, some some recent notable hyperinflations that occurred that are very instructive are is the hyperinflation um, in Weimar Republic Germany right after World War One. Um, Germany was strapped with massive debt, including the war reparations, and also the infrastructure of their country was completely annihilated. And so they had to pay back all of this currency to all the other countries as a result of the war. And uh, what better way to print back, to, to pay people back, but then just print, 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 print. 
right? So the um, gold, I believe, in the in the span of five years, you know, starting in 1919, gold was equal to 100 German marks, and by 1924, gold was about equal to 100 trillion German marks, right? So at that point, people were just basically, <laughs> you know, again, wheelbarrows full of currency going to buy basic staples like bread and, and eggs and uh, people were using the currency to as wallpaper in their houses <laughs> to keep them warm people were burning the currency for the the heat <laughs> in the winter time uh, apparently the german winters were very cold um, everything else except use it for money or as a as a means of transaction because it was simply so worthless right and um and this is what happens um uh, this is the end stage of, of uh, central banking, of command and control economies where they take control of the currency, currency supply. Um, it always gets debased and devalued into nothing, right? And as uh, I believe as it was John Maynard Keynes, he said um, inflation is, uh, is the hideous tax that not one man in a million can diagnose, right? Because over time it is eating away at your at your wealth, at your savings, right? And uh, only the most astute um, observers can understand what exactly is happening and who is responsible. It's not the capitalist, it's not the business owner who is raising his prices as a responsible. No, he's only responding to market signals uh, about how much currency there is in supply and he's raising his prices to try to achieve equilibrium, right? But it's the people who are creating massive amounts of currency and giving it to their friends <laughs> who are really the real criminals. So we should understand um, what exactly is going on and that would clarify a lot of things. So thank you very much for listening. This is uh, Daniel Cuellar from peacefinancism.com.